Indiana High School basketball is very special. I mean, it is what binds the state. It's what binds community after community. And the local tournaments and the county tournaments of the district, all this is, is part of a fabric. Each community's team dreamed of one day making it to Butler Fieldhouse, for decades the site of the state high school championship. It became an iconic beacon, the centerpiece for a sacred way of life for many sports fans who year after year congregated around the game of basketball. After the harvest, when the boys were done doing the hard work, they could come inside and play basketball and the community could come inside and, and join them and, and cheer for them. And then, it, of course, it extended right until it was time to go out and begin to plant the fields again, and the boys had to go back to work. So it was perfect for the calendar. But it was also the perfect emotional mechanism to unite a community and to bring that bond where the well-to-do folk and the not-so-well-to-do folk could all gather in the high school gymnasium on a Friday night and be one. The phenomenon became known as Hoosier Hysteria. Little teams packed tiny gyms defending the basket, as well as the identity and collective pride of their community. I mean, you could be out shooting in a barnyard or out in an alley or whatever, and somebody would have a radio on. And uh, this was the dream of every high school basketball player in the state of Indiana to get the Butler Fieldhouse to the Final Four. Each wanted to get to the Fieldhouse and all it represented. In 1954, in a game immortalized in the movie Hoosiers, one team did. The Milan Indians. Milan was every man's team. Coming from this little community, and invoke that sense of possibility that no matter what my humble circumstances might be, we can make it there. Milan made that dream the reality. 28 to 28. It was the thousand to one shot that came home. I mean, it was the American dream that everybody has whenever there's a a state tournament in any sport. The, the Cinderella team, the smallest school, not many players, not very famous, but all the hopes of that community invested in this one thing, a, a high school basketball team. Basketball folklorists have called the game the Milan Miracle. For many citizens in the farm community of Milan on the southeastern edge of Indiana, High school basketball was the hot topic of conversation during the long Indiana winter of 1954. In Milan, we had a movie theater, but it never was open on Friday night because there would be no business because people went to the basketball game. We had a gymnasium that seated 1,000 in Milan. The population was 1,250, and people fought for tickets. By 1953, their junior year at Milan High School, the boys of rural Ripley County, teammates since their youth, came under the guidance of first-year coach Marvin Wood, a disciple of Butler University coach Tony Hinkle. I think he was just a person who related to his team. The talent and the coaching philosophy and style just fit like a glove. After building a 19-2 record during the regular season, Coach Wood's club began a remarkable run during the 1954 state tournament. By March, they had earned a trip to the state finals at Butler Fieldhouse. Can you imagine what it was like for the kids from Milan to come to Indianapolis, this huge city, to them, New York and London to this giant city and this giant stadium. It must have been overwhelming. 
we're walking in and we get to the edge of the floor and it's almost like there's a glass there and everybody just stopped and looked at it and boy that's a big place you know when it's empty it was it seated 15,000 just short of that and it seemed like a long time and then Bob Engel kind of turned around and he said put a lot of hay in this place couldn't you and that just kind of broke the ice. The 1954 Indiana State Championship featured Tiny Milan with an enrollment of only 161 against the state's basketball colossus, Muncie Central, a school whose enrollment numbered in the thousands and whose basketball squad had already piled up four state titles. They were just two different worlds, two different teams from one extreme to the other, the David Goliath, not just on the floor, but the town itself and their communities. When it happened, it was like the irresistible force and the immovable object, you know, the, the strong little guy and the strong big guy. The electrifying thing about that was, I think they had 2,000 people there cheering for them, and we had 13,000 people uh, cheering for Milan because we were the underdog. During the final contest, the score was tied with 18 seconds to go when Milan called timeout to set up one final shot for their top scorer, Bobby Plum. The team would move to the left side of the court because he was going to drive to his right and, and either go all the way and take his jump shot. I, I faked left and he just leaned a little bit. I had a step on him and he dropped way back and I stopped at the free throw line. buzzer went off and we just won the state tournament 32 to 30 and there's 15,000 fans immediately on the floor and pandemonium broke loose. In 1986, more than three decades after that famous game, Hollywood producers recaptured the last second magic that took place on the Hinkle Fieldhouse hardwood in the Academy Award nominated movie, Hoosiers. The company that put up the money for Hoosiers actually tried to convince us to shoot this in Canada, of all places. But uh, there were a lot of reasons that we said that unless you allow us to shoot in Indiana, we will not shoot the film. We'll just walk away from it. And part of it was that um, we wanted to use the kind of iconographic imagery and the lore of Indiana basketball and the history of Indiana basketball. And, and Hinkle Fieldhouse represents where people go when they're winners. Hoosiers made such a big impact on me, the movie. There's no doubt uh, of the intensity in Indiana, particularly in high school basketball. It is a special thing in Indiana. It really exemplifies uh, what it's like growing up in the state of Indiana. I think very few people understand uh, what it's like to attend a high school game there. You know, I, I remember my senior year. We played Marion on Friday night. We played Indianapolis Cathedral on Saturday night. We had 10,000 each night. So here I am, a high school player, and I'm playing in front of 20,000 people. Uh, that doesn't happen anywhere else, and I think that's what Hoosiers uh, really exemplifies. It gave uh, other schools hope, possibility that they could do it. There had been schools before who had made advancement in the tournament, and uh, nobody had ever won the state championship. And then after that, there was a comparison always to Milan. It really was the ultimate victory. Cinderella and all America thrilled to it, not just Indiana.